Hey guys, it's X in Shadow here with an impressions video for you guys. Um, so I've been playing a couple of different games lately, so I decided that uh, over the next couple of days I'd upload a few um, impressions videos for each of them, just, you know, so that I get some content up on this channel for once, because I do know that there has been a drought lately, and I am working on fixing that. So anyway, back on topic, I have recently just beat A Child of Light, uh, which is a, I think, PS4, PS3, Xbox uh, 360, maybe Xbox One, and I played the Wii U version. Uh, oh, PC too. It's a PC uh, game as well. So, uh, I just finished that. Um, it's actually a game that I've been looking forward to for quite a while, uh, because um, it's just, uh, it's such a different game than what we tend to see a lot normally. Well, First things first, it, the game is made by Ubisoft and uses the same uh, gameplay engine that was used for Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends, which automatically got me interested because those two games look absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, that was what got me interested to begin with, you know, just the general um, art aesthetics and all of that. Um, you know, it was very unique, uh, you know, there isn't a game that looks like this, generally. Because, you know, even though it uses the same engine as the Rayman games, it has a very different art style. Um, but what also got me interested when I was first seeing footage of the game was just, you know, uh, the, the general tone that the game was going for. Because, um, this game's general motif is like, it's trying to be a fairy tale, uh, basically. And if... I might be, I'm probably wrong, but there aren't too many games out there that try to go for that specific you, you, uh, tone, you know? There are, aren't too many, you know, uh, games that try to be the equivalent of what uh, a parent would read to a small child before they go to be bed. So, you know, it, uh, uh, immediately that sort of unique perspective caught my eye. And really, the sort of fairy tale theme... Uh, permeates almost every single aspect of the experience to the point where uh, even all of the dialogue is written in rhyme. Um, so, yeah, that's actually uh, probably the most noteworthy thing about its writing is that the entire thing is written in rhyme with, like, a handful of exceptions. But even then, the points where they decide not to speak in rhyme are, uh, you know, are, like, significant because story reasons and whatnot. So, yeah, um, the game's writing and story is very, very good. Um, you play as a, as a girl named Aurora, and she's, like, a little girl, like, maybe five or six, and she gets magically teleported to the land of Lemuria, I think. I don't know how to pronounce it. And, you know, uh, she's kind of freaked out by that and just wants to go home, but... It's told to her that she's supposed to save the ki uh, the kingdom from the evil Dark Queen, Umbra. And so you go out, you've got to try to find the sun, the moon, and the stars in order to do this. And you just get this really, really uh, unique and interesting story that sort of expands as it goes. And it never gets too complex or anything. But the game does an excellent job at making Lemuria feel like its own living, breathing world. And... Uh, I really value that in games an awful lot. I don't like it when, like, when you go to a town and, you know, you've got, like, maybe five NPCs who don't say anything interesting and then you forget the name of the town as soon as you leave, you know? I really love it when the ga when games uh, try to create these living, breathing areas because this is the one area of storytelling, you know, world building, that I think that video games can do better than nearly any other genre out there. So, yeah, this game has fantastic world building. Um, the writing for, like, all the party members that you meet is great. You know, everybody is very uh, unique, interesting. You know, I love all the different party members you get. And, you know, also, another thing that I I'll appreciate quite a bit is that um, the game is also pretty funny. Um, and, uh, well, it's not, like, laugh-out-loud hilarious, and it doesn't, like, aim for humor in the same way that games like Ace Attorney does, but it does know when to crack a joke and when to be more serious. So, you know, I always appreciate a game that can make me laugh, so... Um, uh, yeah, the, the Child of Light gets points on that front. So, yeah, I, I don't want to talk too much about the story in general because it is really something that you should experience on your own, but it does have quite a few really touching moments, too, 
like uh, stuff that really like yanks at your heartstrings at points especially one segment uh in the middle of the game uh i'd say somewhere around the two-thirds point uh, there is this a uh, really really um heartbreak it's like an hour-long stretch which is just like jamming at your heartstrings and it's just excellent so yeah i really i really love that and now when we get to the gameplay um there's really two different um modes you know there's walking around the overworld and then there's the battle system which you know because it's an rpg you know that that's to be expected i like the thing about this is though is that in this game i liked fighting things and exploring the overworld equally and that does not happen in an awful lot of RPGs, you know. In a lot of RPGs, I either, you know, uh, it, the battle system's either really bland and I just care more about finding stuff on the overworld, or the overworld is just sort of eh, and I'll just look forward to the fights that I can get into. Child of Light is really, really great in that I liked both the battle systems and the uh, overworld stuff equally. And that that is something that ha not a lot of RPGs has managed to, to, you know, do for me. So, you know, props for that. Um, when you're exploring the world, the entire, uh, the entire um, uh, overworld takes place on a 2D plane. And so you, you walk around and you got to try to find, like, treasure chests and stuff, solve a couple of light environmental puzzles... Uh, but what makes uh, the game unique in that sense is, is that very early on in the game, like within an hour, you get the ability to fly. So you can basically fly all over the all over the map. And that makes the exploration so much more rewarding because there's such a sense of freedom in that there are, there's basically never any point where the game locks you out of anything. You know, you just sort of explore and the game never says, no, you can't go there. You know, it's that's such a open, flowing feeling to the exploration that makes it so much fun to, you know, just walk around and um, and try to find stuff, you know? And th it also helps that there's, like, goodies hidden everywhere. Like, you know, there's treasure chests all over the place. You can find stardusts, which will up the stats of one of your characters. And you can also find... Uh, a little confession notes, which I'll have, like, background details and stuff like that. So, you know, I really liked uh, being able to find stuff like that, you know. there it, There's a reason to look all over the place, too, which makes the exploration even more, um, even more fulfilling. Um, one part of the, I guess I should talk about this gameplay mechanic now, because it sort of bridges uh, the exploration and the battle system, but you don't just control Aurora in this game. You also have a little blue ball of light, named Igniculus, and he sort of floats around you for the most part, but you can control him on your own with the right analog stick or with the touchscreen if you're playing on the Wii U. And, you know, he's used in a lot of different puzzles because, you know, he'll shine his light on things and, you know, it'll do environmental stuff. Uh, but you can also use him to heal yourself out of battle and uh, interact with enemies, like, you know, stun them so that you can go past them without fighting and things like that. So, I really like him in that sense, because, you know, uh, you can use him to pick up stuff that would be too much of a pain in the ass to get yourself, or what have you. You know, I like having him in that sense, but he's also uh, really useful in battle, too. And now, I enjoyed this game's battle system uh, pretty well, you know, it's not the, the, the best battle system I've ever seen. But it it works, and it's, you know, a lot of fun to do, too. So, you know, I, I liked the, the fighting in this game. Uh, basically, how fights work is that you've got an active time bar on the bottom of the screen, and all of the characters, like, have little icons on it that'll move past the active time bar. bar. And there's a, a wait section of the bar, and then there's a cast section at the very end. Um, and when you reach the cast section, you can choose your character's action. So if you choose to attack, you can select the attack option and then you aim at an enemy. And then, you know, you hit the enemy and then you go back to the beginning of the, the cast bar. The thing is, however, if you're in, if you're casting, you know, some, some uh, attacks take longer to cast. And if you're casting and somebody else manages to hit you first, you get interrupted and you're bounced back uh, to the wait area again. 
And this can happen to your enemies, and it can also happen to you, too. So, first off, I, I love games that uh, do that, so, you know, the same rules apply to everyone. You know, a lot of really great battle systems make sure that that happens, you know, because it's similar to SMT4 and uh, Bravely Default, where everybody has the same rules. I, 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 I don't like it when... Uh, you know, there are games where enemies, you know, don't have to follow the same limitations that you do. But that's just a completely different tangent. Um, uh, what, uh, the, what the, makes the battle system a, a little bit frustrating, I guess, is that there are times where uh, you can get, you know, sort of into a, an interrupted cycle where you just can never uh, get a turn. Um, but what helps with that is, is that you can control Igniculus in the battle screen too. And while you can, and so you can use his, uh, his light power to either heal yourself a little bit or slow down enemies on the, on the, slow down enemies turns, which is immensely helpful. Um, but yeah, um, the, the battle system is pretty good, but uh, it has its flaws, I guess. Uh, the one thing is is that you only get to have two party members on the on screen at one time. And, you know, that's not too big of a deal, uh, but, you know, it does cut down your options an awful lot of the time because, you know, you can't have a white mage, a buffer, and a damage dealer out there. So, you know, trying to get buffs on everyone and keep everyone healed is a little bit of a juggling game, and I'm not too much of a fan of those in RPGs. And another, um, like, little issue that I have, you know, it's not that big of a deal, because this is but not even nearly anywhere close to the worst I've seen of this in an RPG, but a lot of the characters are kind of, um, I don't want to say redundant, but I do want to say that, that you're going to be using some characters an awful lot more than you're going to be using other ones, because, like, Aurora is one of the best characters in the game, so you're going to have her out almost all of the time. And then you've got a couple of other characters, too. Like, you've got Finn, who's your general, you know, black mage. You've got Rubella, who's your white mage. Um, uh, Angus, I think is his name, who's like your your heavy hitter tank. Um, so, you know, depending on the situation, uh, you're probably going to have Angus or Finn out for most of the random battles that you have. Because, you know, they're the best at dealing magical damage or physical damage. And everyone else is just really situational. Like, you're only going to bring out Rubella, the, your white mage, if you need to heal. You're only going to really bring out Tristis, who's like your buffer and debuffer, during boss fights. And only then for like a turn or two to set up the unstoppable uh, buff, uh, which is his best one. Uh, unstoppable makes it so that he can't be uninterrupted, which makes it great. Um... You're only going to ever really bring out, like, Robert, who's your rogue, if you, in, like, other than the first dungeon where you fi get him, he's pretty useful there. You're almost never going to bring him out. He's, I don't want to say completely useless, but he's, he's his uses are very limited. And Jen, uh, who's one of the last party members you get, uh, you're really only going to use her sparingly, and that's really just if you need to paralyze someone. So, um... Yeah, that's just really one of my only other issues with the battle system, is, is that you're really, there's a lot of characters that you're going to only use every, a handful of times, which is a little bit disappointed, but it's not that big of a deal. It certainly didn't hamper my enjoyment of the battle system or combat in any way, so, you know, uh, but it, it's something to keep in mind if you're one of those people who needs to have a perfectly balanced party or anything. But yeah, um... Overall, I really enjoyed Child of Light. It's not a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination, but the game did put me into the same sort of zone I get when playing games like Lost Winds or Kirby 64, where I'm just sort of totally sucked in, and, you know, I can't tear my eyes off of the screen because there's just a perfect com combination of uh, visuals, gameplay, and music. And, oh, I for almost forgot to talk about the music. The game's music is absolutely phenomenal. There aren't too many super memorable tracks, but there's just so much um, atmosphere and uh, there's such a distinctive sound with lots and lots of piano and flute that, you know, I, I love listening to the music. It's a part, it's almost like it's just part of the painting or part of the story in and of itself. So I just loved that aspect. But yeah. Uh, you can get the game digitally for like 15 bucks, so, you know, despite a couple of small hiccups here and there, you know, it's certainly worth the money, and it's not even all that long, too. Like, I know a lot of people don't uh, want to play RPGs because they feel like they're going to get sucked in for like 100 hours, and I got done in like 15 or so, so, you know, 
uh, you're not, it's not too much of a commitment to play Child of Light, and I do think that it's something that everybody should play through at least once, so, it gets a, it gets a good recommendation from me, you know, a couple of minor, uh, flaws, but overall, it is a fantastic game, and I recommend it to everyone, so, yeah, that's about it for me, I'm X and Shadow, and I'll see you guys later.